faced him with Part 1 Naruto. Could Naruto as a child manage to stop all of these terrifying threats? Let's find out. Alright. I want to say absolutely yes. If he drops Gamabunta, ain't nobody from the worst stop it, I'll be honest with you. That's pure facts. It doesn't really matter how Naruto gets to the JJK verse, but for the people who like continuity, let's say he stumbles on that filler Otsutsuki time travel device uh -huh. from the one good filler arc in Boruto, uh -huh. and the plot demands that one protagonist swaps for the other. Perfect uh -huh. writing, just as Kishimoto would have done it. Hey! So, Naruto lands exactly in Yuji's place <laughs> on October 31st, and we're set to begin. Okay. But here's where we need to take the first pause, because Naruto exists <laughs> in the JJK world as a well-known anime series. The characters oh, here okay, should have some you. idea of who Naruto is, and while that immediately might cause some concern, I'm positive with how mission-focused Meimei is, she get a hold of the details and reform oh, her plan. Make oh, stop the ship. Oh, okay, so he's- okay. Yumi and Ino likely have seen the Naruto series, and would have a much better idea of what well, Naruto yeah, is capable asks. of, and they brief him of all available information. I haven't a clue what's going on here, but I'll act like I do. <laughs> it's at this point, we get uh -huh. to see what a massive difference Naruto would make here. He takes a seal in his hands and summons 500 shadow clones. I could do this that is a sleep. fraction of the clones Naruto can summon at this point, having summoned 2,000 of them against the partially transformed Gara. And like, generally speaking, if you're fighting 2,000 people at once, what do you do about that? Like, well, what do you do about that? Which I should mention, happens nearly 100 chapters prior to the end of part 1. Naruto by this point should be significantly stronger than he was then. Uh -huh. So, the Naruto spread around with the intention to destroy the barriers, and we get our first it's fight. Like Naruto versus the Locust Plague. And Naruto yeah, okay, absolutely bro. stops. It's a no diff victory, and we need to talk about why. At this point in the series, most characters are scaling around supersonic speeds and multi city block levels for attack potency. Uh -huh. Naruto, even at his ripe old age of 13, is scaling to mass. Why did you say ripe? Okay, let me go back. <laughs> Yo, what, that threw me off guard. Why do you, why you use that terminology? ...for attack potency. Naruto, even at his ripe old age of 13, is scaling to massively hypersonic speed and mountain levels of attack potency. Oh, mountain level Naruto man. characters are scaled incredibly powerfully, even in the early stages of the show. So, of course, Naruto outmatches most JJK characters at this point in raw power. It's important to keep in mind the sometimes forgotten ability of the Shadow Clone technique to transfer knowledge between the clones and the user when the clone disperses. I'm not taking it in the canon story. timeline, the Shibuya incident lasted quite a long time because the sorcerers had difficulty organizing information amongst themselves amidst these intense battles. Uh -huh. But Naruto can spread all available information it's across the city nearly instantly, so tracking down each of the bearers of the barrier seals was done basically with no difficulty. So Megami and a handful of Naruto's take on Jiro, who was taken down in less than a uh -huh. fraction of the time. With Naruto able to outmatch Jiro physically, Megami can more quickly mm. analyze his curse technique I and see. therefore figure out its major drawback. That's not even to mention that due to how powerful Naruto is, he could just grapple Jiro, hold him in place while Megami completely violates him with every single attack imaginable yeah, until he was figures the, um, out something that I'll works. I was mainly like the beats. That's what I was mainly talking about. Like, um... Not be able to debate like two different characters from like different verses, like that type of stuff. What are you talking about? Not like this. It's absolutely brutal. It's like a hypothetical and there's situation. no amount of miracles that can save Harata from being pummeled over and over until all of those stupid marks Yo, under his that eyes. That dude was so trash. <laughs> that guy, that guy, uh, you know, I think his name is Eno. Yeah, he, he's terrible, dude. It's turned white. Meanwhile, Ino and another set of Naruto's are more than enough to stop the Granny from summoning Toji, which is a huge benefit to the entire battlefield because we know the levels of beatdown that Toji brings in every single one of his is fights. You know? Except, oh, he too would get no diff by Naruto. <laughs> Toji is extremely powerful by JJK standards, as far as his physical attributes go, and while his skills in combat far surpassed Naruto's at this point, there's just no way that Toji is throwing hands with a dozen Naruto clones all faster than him and attacking with more strength than he can handle. My and that's not even to mention Kurama's influence, which is a huge... The real question is, Kishimoto and Studio Periyot, it has been, I think, almost two years from our promised four episodes of Naruto remakes. Where are they yet? Where are they? They've been waiting for the past two years. They ain't say nothing about it. I, I, they, they finessed us. They said that... 
Uh, uh. Huge factor here. Naruto under stress has tapped into semi-controlled versions of his Kurama forms, uh -huh. including Initial and V1. These are absolutely massive amps to his speed, durability, and attack potency right. that would effectively negate any difference in skill that Toji might have. But even if we equalize their stats, Who's Naruto's this? regen and stamina are ridiculous. Not only is his energy pool nearly bottomless by virtue of being an Uzumaki with the Nine Tails, but he has been shown to heal from being stabbed through the chest by Sasuke's Chidori in a matter scan. of seconds. Toji is extremely skilled, but there's no chance that he wears down Naruto before he's hit by a Rasengan and torn to bits. As much as I love Toji and would love to glaze him, he's completely getting no diffs hey, by this blonde 12 year old while being given a shonen lecture in Naruto's ninja way. <laughs> But thankfully, we don't need to see our man Toji get treated that way, because Naruto and Ino beat the ever-living hell out of Ogami and this character who doesn't even have a name. I mean, when your name on the official wiki is listed as someone else's grandson, and you come across a guy with protagonist hair, you know you're getting cooked. Bro, that's, Back that's, in the subway station, another set of Naruto's is taking on Chosu, who may prove to be his first interesting matchup. Chosu's blood manipulation, on paper, is such a direct counter to Naruto's fighting style. Shadow clones can't even take a singular hit before dispersing. And Naruto really has huh? Okay, let's fact check that. To Naruto's fighting style, shadow clones can't even take a singular hit before dispersing. And Naruto, uh, they take multiple hits. This depends on the user. Literally in the fourth Ninja War, most of Naruto is a clone. Bro, what kind of really has no means of closing the gap? Naruto, other than outpacing okay. Choso in pure speed, which of course he can do, and Choso is neutralized. Even Dagon with his domain expansion is not much of a threat, given the fact that we've previously established that Toji is physically outclassed by Naruto, and we saw the kind of damage he did to Dagon. So this fight is over and done with extremely quickly. True. Again, even if we lower Naruto's stats to Dagon's, which would have to be a huge nerf, he'd still match up extremely well in this limited environment due to having an incredible amount of support yeah, from the rest of the individuals here. So either way, uh, I haven't watched Independence Day, so I, I don't know what that is. Dagon is getting served up. I'll because all of this likely. is happening simultaneously, due to the sheer scale of Naruto's presence, time becomes a major factor here. By this point, they have managed to take down nearly every threat in record time, not sequentially as the show had done, but all of these events happened nearly simultaneously. Naruto has been sweeping across Yo, the city, demolishing crazy. every opponent he's come across with very little effort and effectively no difficulty. If we take the time that Yuji first encountered the Locust Spirit at 9.03pm, Naruto splatters the bug across the wall with a single punch or at most a Rasengan. At 9.04 he moves to Choso and wipes the floor with him. At 9.10 he moves to Dagon who can't possibly take more than 10 minutes. And these are very, very generous Bro, estimates because was so Yuji good. alone was nearly on par with Choso and Dagon got soloed by Toji. So if we consider that Nanami, Nobara, Megumi, and the entire gang will be nearly at full strength by this point and are fighting together, these fights are ending extremely quickly. Gojo was originally sealed at 9.26pm, and even if we take some huge leaps, given the JJK the versus the Dude, benefit of the doubt that? and say they can stand up to a 12 year old Naruto at all, let alone when he decides <coughs> to go into his version 1 state, there is no conceivable chance that it takes him more than 20 minutes to blow through the Locust, Choso, and Dagon, all fights that would be happening simultaneously. Not a single- I don't- Naruto, he- he literally couldn't beat Mahito. I don't think there's nothing he could do that could beat Mahito. He has to hurt his soul. Naruto's a kid, nothing to affect the soul, like at all. Like literally nothing. So he couldn't beat him. But he could probably subdue him. With like clones or something, but I, I don't know. Still one of these combatants in the way between Naruto and Gojo can stop a horde of hypersonic Naruto's from moving past to the next battle, enabling Naruto and the others to swiftly move closer and closer to Gojo. So they make it to Gojo, who at Naruto, this point, let's say, will have just utilized his stop? domain expansion, and we have our first branch in continuity. Because Naruto could conceivably stop Gojo from being sealed, and they'd all fight the rest of the cursed spirits and put Kenjaku down for good. But even if Gojo is sealed here, Naruto and the others easily take down Mahito, Jogo, and Kenjaku. You might look at Mahito and wonder why Naruto can even damage him in the first place, That's and it's not good. solely due to verse equivalency. Because even with cursed energy, most people can't even damage Mahito in a meaningful way. Right. Mahito doesn't merely heal his body to regenerate his wounds. Rather, he has such a clear image of the shape of his soul, all he has to do is keep that image intact, and his body will follow. The reason okay. why Yuji can damage him is due to being inhabited by Sukuna. 
which has given him a unique insight into the contours of the soul, thus allowing him to strike at Mahito's. And it's here we have to thank the Naruto series for being so influential, because Yuji isn't the only protagonist whose body is inhabited by another soul. Oh. Oh. I take that back. And Naruto's living in the blender. Oh. In Naruto's case, he has the QB, a living embodiment of Chakra, and with some grade school level of mental gymnastics, we can safely assume that Naruto too would have some innate ability to do this, much like Yuji. But <laughs> even such if he a didn't, reach. and we were disregarding this potential crossverse <laughs> people, there are just too many people here for Kenjaku to risk losing out on Idol Transfiguration That's for. True. So either Mahito is defeated by Naruto and Kenjaku just absorbs him in the way that he did after his battle with Yuji, or Kenjaku calculates that the risk is too high and takes a preventative measure and absorbs Mahito either way. That just leaves Jogo and Kenjaku. Since Yuji and by extension Sukuna isn't here, Urame never shows up. And I'd personally say with these odds all stacked against Kenjaku and Jogo, all after suffering incredible losses, they'd certainly have to turn tail and attempt to escape, since victory doesn't even begin to seem likely here. But it let's say for like pure speculation that they do fight, Jogo would have no qualms using his domain expansion, so he utilizes Coffin of the Iron Mountain, and it brings everyone into the inside of a volcano. And while this maneuver would certainly disperse every single one of Naruto's clones, and put all of the other sorcerers at risk, the threat of their deaths would certainly bring about the activation of Naruto's V1 cloak, and the amp would rocket Naruto into blitzing territory, and Jogo would get dealt with worse than he did against Gojo. But maybe Jogo drops his Yo, meteor instead of the domain expansion. So well, Naruto's Vermilion Rasengan has an attack potency of city level at the lowest possible lowball, all the way up to large mountain level at the highest. Jogo stands no chance, but it wouldn't really matter either way. Some because people Gojo either like, never. Well, actually, Ken Naruto was a uh, light speed because he fought a react to Haku, which is light speed. Bro, some power scalers are just. There is no brain in that in that skull of theirs. Ever got sealed, or they never had a chance to escape with him in the first place, as the prison realm would be stuck to the ground, leaving ample time for everyone to get in place and defeat the rest of the opposition. So that's part when Naruto absolutely changes the flow of the Shibuya incident while just half-assing it. Had he summoned 2,000 clones like he did against Gara? This would have been over in a matter of minutes, but with how easily Naruto was dispatching each combatant he went against, I don't think he would have ever been pushed to that point. I mean, what's a greater threat? A giant tailed beast made out of sand, capable of blowing up villages with a single blast? Or a scrappy group of low-powered magicians that kind of- uh, I think Gojo, or Jogo, my bad. Punch hard. The JJK disrespect continues, but there were quite a lot of comments in my last vid asking to give a low-powered version of a Naruto character against the JJK verse, and here you have it. Naruto is like the most basic of the entire cast. No Keke Genkai, no Elemental Jutsu, no Genjutsu, or anything what? of the sort. He sort it's of like just uses Shadow Clones and scales sort of well compared to the rest of the Genin in his class. And all he has is a really scrappy attitude. Uh... Huh? I mean, he literally beat up Gara, The same Gara that beat a Six Gates Lee. Uh, that don't make much sense, but I mean, hey, whatever you say. A buttload of chakra and, well, the cube. Um, no, Thanks for watching. Wrong, no. If you enjoyed, please do the YouTube stuff. It helps a lot. Peace. Alright, also an interesting video.